Welcome back to Nickelodeon. This coming corner, classic, classic, non-classic. This is episode number 1126 and double shot number 1020. I got oh, 20, 20, yeah, 1020. I got one Marvel trade, one DC trade. First up, it is all new Wolverine Volume 4 Immune. Before I talk about the story and what issues are in here, of course, this is written by Tom Taylor. I want to talk briefly about this awesome logo. Yeah, they actually, with, with this particular set of issues, they changed the logo. Like, here, here inside the book, we actually have the original logo for the book, where it's, like, very sliced up. Now, basically, the all-new Wolverine logo, the word Wolverine is done in the classic style logo that used by her late, at this point in time, her late father. And those of you curious about the X in the background, like, behind it, yeah, there's a reason for that, because this comes out right after the events of... Inhumans vs. X-Men. Yep. Also, Gabby has got a costume. Yep. Though, it's thanks to the very next arc of the series, she gets the name of Honey Badger. Still by Tom Taylor, this collection issues 1924. The artwork in here is done by a couple different, at least about one artist on here, and it's Leonard Kirk. Yep. There was also the anchor for a few issues. Yeah. Now, there's a couple different storylines going on in here. First, now I should point out about the costume. Yes, Laura's got a new costume in the storyline, which this is her second costume as Wolverine. The costume itself, what I can tell, is heavily inspired by her time in X-Force. Yep, that's pretty much what this costume was inspired by. Mm, let me... That should do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this costume is inspired by her time in X-Force. So I guess Tom Taylor felt as though she needed a little bit of an upgrade because anytime she's shot, she's developed bullet holes in her own freaking costume. This costume is not being bulletproof despite the fact she is bulletproof. Yep. We also have a guest appearance with the Guardians of the Galaxy. And Spider-Man every briefly appears near the uh, costume. Yes, Spider-Man. Which is nothing unusual because he occasionally appeared in... He appeared like occasionally in the original Wolverine book, but not all the time. We also hear it's like Beast, Nydia Pym, yeah, because of virus show up on Earth, and of course they go into space. Yeah. These are people basically are like the geniuses. Now, in case you're wondering, like, where the heck is Reed Richards? He is off in frickin' space because apparently Marvel Comics, basically the writers can't touch the, the, the Richards family. Why... Well, the reason is, and it's completely stupid. The reason why they're not appearing in Marvel Universe at this point, though they are back right now, the reason is because I'm always blood feud with Fox over the movie rights at this point. Okay, and the people who help Laura with the virus that appears early part of this issues is Beast, Mockingbird, though under real name Dr. Bar Morse, Nydia Pym, the second wa well, third Wasp, Amadeus Cho, at this point, is the totally awesome Hulk. Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man. And Doctor Strange. Okay. Now, of these people, only one of whom is actually a scientist. Only one of whom is actually a regular doctor. The other one's just regular scientist. Yeah. Doctor Strange is just a surgeon. He's not... Fr well, my guess is because it's a virus. That's probably the reason why he's called it because of the medical side of it. Because, well, he's a doctor. Okay, fine. And... This is like this for the first half of the story. He's there on Earth, and they do eventually find the cure. They also briefly help the head of, I think it's AIM, one of the heads of AIM, who was the mother of, yeah, this woman here. She's actually the mother of the second scorpion. Yes, this woman right here. Yeah, and apparently she's got the virus, and of course her costume is torn in the arm, though she apparently is cured of it. And then, of course, they go to space. Yep. And yes, Ironheart pops up in here too. And in case you're wondering, if you read this book, and you probably notice there is a Tony Stark, a, uh, well, actually Tony Stark does not show up in here at all. And they're at the Triskelion, basically the sickness. Now you're probably thinking, when the heck the Triskelion showed up? They actually showed up in the first volume of Al Ewing's Ultimates book, which the place has completely disappeared. Yes! As far as I know, it's still around the 616 version of Triskelion, but nothing's been done with this since the end of Al Ewing's Ultimates book. Yeah, I don't know if it's abandoned, I have no idea. And of course, we have a brief team with, with Deadpool, 
Dokken shows up in here as well. Oh man, Logan. Yeah, he returns his one storyline. Yep. And it's mostly just Laura training old for like a couple issues. And apparently she gets a liaison officer with Shield. Of course, she's not going to Hill, but because of the bad relationship, it's Nick Fury, the woman who sh the guy who shot her multiple times. Yep. And he goes back, he goes into space with the Guardians. Now, the writer at this point in time, I believe it was Gary Duggan. Yeah, Gary Duggan was the writer of the book because they mention here that Drax is a pacifist. Yeah, Drax Destroyer, known killer, is a pacifist. That was something Gary Duggan came up with. So, she's teamed up with the Gary Duggan lineup of the Guardians, which is mostly the line from the movies. Well, from the first movie, anyways. And, of course, they counsel the Brew, which I thought that was kind of fun. And even Gabba gets briefly host of the brew because, well, Wolverine himself was actually briefly host of the brew, so why not one of his daughters? Yep. This, of course, is pretty good, but kind of a weak storyline. But I would say there's some good things, but, I mean, Gabby becoming BFFs with, with Deadpool. I like all the massive scientists they have in here to discuss the virus, which is only here by a couple issues. But, yeah, this is pretty good. Give this book roughly a 9 out of 10. It's actually a step down from Enemy of State. Though, there's Orphans of X next. Though, and also, there's also a follow-up with the Wolverines. But the thing with that series was, it was a 20-issue weekly book that never had a conclusion. It just stopped because of two reasons. Low sales and Secret Wars. Yep, because Secret Wars ruins everything. Just like a Flashpoint ruined everything for DC. Very similar. Next up it is... Superman Action Comics Volume 3 Leviathan Hunt. This collects issues of Action Comics 1012 to 1016. Yep, this one you have Superman team up with Naomi. Yes, the brand new character Ben just created. He briefly works with her, discuss a little bit about her back, like basically integrate her fully into more DC Universe whole. Though this comes right after the er, conclusion of her mini series. And then she gets moved over to Young Justice, where she currently is right now. We also have stuff with Red Cloud in here, and there's an appearance by Leviathan, basically set up the Leviathan, the event Leviathan miniseries, also by Bendis, which was really good by the way. Who Leviathan is, I will not spoil who he is. This by the fact, yes, it has been spoiled in the internet who he is. He's one of Manhunters, but I'm not gonna say which one it is, because I am not gonna spoil that until I review Le event Leviathan. Yeah. Because Leviathan's head by Superman Percy it was originally head by Talia, but then this guy just overthrew her and just, well, deal with it. And we also have Perry White meeting the owner of Daily Planet, a woman who one of the reporters actually kind of works for. Yeah, and the reporter basically who was considering Superman to be a killer. Yeah, and the reason why that Perry White didn't run the, the byline, the article, and... He has a very good reason. There's no evidence to support that Superman was killing gangsters. Yeah, that was done by Red Cloud, a.k.a. this reporter. Which, by the way, Superman does not find out who this woman is until just very recently. Yeah, it takes her over, him over a freaking year to find out who, he, who the Red Cloud really is. The readers know who she is, but not Superman. Yep. I mean, mostly, if you look at these issues, it's mostly just set up for Leviathan, it, the event Leviathan, what also basically exploring stuff Ben this has done, which is which basically a new miniseries. And, well, there's a little beat appearance here about the Wonder Twin. Yeah, they show up in here. And Batman shows in here. That was really cool. Yeah, and also, it's mostly like a conclusion, or at least kind of a follow-up to Naomi. But that's all you can say what happen with these issues. They're, they're pretty decent what they are, and I'm definitely looking forward to reading the next trade. And we give this book roughly a, also a 9 out of 10. Now, I have heard recently that Bendis is leaving the Superman books. My friend Tivia actually likes as me. I'm a bit sad to see him go because he just came with book just about two years ago. Yeah, he just came out and now he's leaving? Yeah, I'm thinking that's a little weird, but what are you going to do? I mean, it's a short period of time for Bendis being in the book. I mean, I mean, in the case of Action Comics, Dan Jurgis was book for, back in the book for, he came back for two years before he left to hand the book off to Brad Michael Bendis. 
Now, here's the thing about Bendis. He basically took two books, the two Superman books, Action Comics and Superman. These two books, prior to this, were come out twice a month. When Bendis came on board, he probably saw that, yeah, that's kind of a bad idea. So I'm going to trim it down to be once a month releases, which, in my opinion, is great. Because, well, the whole twice a month thing basically is a little bit more expanding in people's pockets. Now, what I think of the run so far for Superman, I'm not proud of Michael Bendis. I mean, I like this stuff. I mean, I like the, when it comes to action comics, the first change is the first historic is okay. Didn't really have any problem with it. And it's kind of like when you look at action comics, it's mostly set up for a miniseries. That's what you can kind of say mostly the plot threads that goes on here for the past, like, as of this trade, for 16 issues. It's mostly set up for that miniseries. That's basically what the plot three said, because Bendis is known for doing this. He's, he occasionally likes to help plant seeds for future stuff. He probably loves doing that, and I, I think it may be like a couple different rares done that. I know Jeff Johns has got humongous reputation for doing that for a lot of the books he's on, like he did for Green Lantern, he did for Justice League. Yeah, he would basically tease stuff early on, and he would pay it off. Josh Williamson would pretty much do the same thing with Flash, so yeah, Bendis must have liked that idea, so... Do that. Mm -hmm. The whole thing with Red Cloud. And be, oh yeah, there's also appearance here by Rosenthorn. And n as far as I can tell, I don't know. If, I didn't do much research on, the, on this Rosenthorn. There's been a couple of different Rosenthorns over the years. I don't know if this is the original one who was married to Alan Scott. Or if it's the second one who had a miniseries. It could be the original one where you imagine. I don't know. I didn't do much research into it. But... In my opinion, Red Cloud, and most of you agree with me on this, Red Cloud is an absolute boring villain. Yeah, she's not that interesting at all. And I'm like, okay, Bendis, you do know Superman has own rogues gallery. I don't mind him introducing new, a new villain for the rogues gallery. At least there's only one. Unlike Dan... Oh yeah, and here's the thing. He also wants... He wrote in here that he wants... Basically, Paramount wants Lois to come back to the planet. Okay, fine. But, also in case you're wondering, John Kent is not in this book at all. Yeah, I don't think he appears in any issues of Action Comics for Bendis. No, he mostly appears in Superman, which I think is fine. Though, I know Tivy has not been a big fan of this run. Because, well, Lois and Clark basically being different apartments. John being aged up, but... There are some things I have liked about the run for Bendis so far. I like the fact he brought back Legion of Superior, despite the fact Jeff Johns was teasing that before he did it. And I think his main cement book is really good. Action Comics is okay for the most part, though I personally can't wait for you to live by because that was a really good miniseries. Yep, but not much else to say about this. Also, I should mention this when it comes to Superman. Like, every issue opens up basically like an advertisement for, like, like pretty much like after the first couple of issues they, they tease. They have this Daily Planet webpage, and one of the pages they actually have an issue of the, I think it was like the Jimmy Olsen miniseries. Now, I should point out, though, the cover art here is done by Jamie, Jamal Campbell. The artist for the main books is done by Seisman, uh, Sesman. Kuroski, which I think this is actually really good artwork. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion, anyways. Let me show you. Let's see. I'm going to take a picture of Superman here. Okay, here's some sample artwork of this artist. Because Bendis is known for doing like crime stuff, and that's probably what the artist probably took inspiration from, like crime. The crime essence stuff. Though, this is something not associated with Superman. This is probably something associated with Batman. Which is kind of weird, but I don't mind it. They also mentioned Spyro in here, which... Yeah, Lois has been investigating them in this book here. But... In case you're all wondering, like, who would like who i like to see take over the Superman books. Well, I'm not just saying Dan Jurgen could take over because he just left... I'm not just he can come back because it's been just too soon. It's only been two years since he left. If I would pick, 
I would definitely have to pick Terry Jutes Moss because he's busy with Tech the Comics. But the one person I would probably pick to take over Superman, and this is actually probably a pretty good choice, Tom King. Yes, I think Tom King will be an excellent choice to take over Superman. Why? Because I think it's a good choice. He's a damn good writer, too. And I wouldn't mind if Tim Seeley basically took over one of the books, too. I mean, it's something different. It doesn't have the right all Batman stuff for, for DC. Why not basically do some Superman? And plus, Tom King does have some experience writing Superman. Well, he wrote him in Pages of Grayson, so... I don't see why not. Yeah, have basically, like, Axe Comics on by Tom King, and have Superman run by Tim Seeley. To me, that sounds like a good idea. Probably not bring back Grant Morrison in the book. I thought it was okay, but even though it's been, like, let's see. He left the book, I believe it was, like, 2013. Even though it has been sometimes since he left Axe Comics, but... I don't think people want to see him come back to X-Men, especially since he's doing pretty well over on Green Lantern. Because it's like it's like going back to the book that he probably didn't need to go to again. Yeah. Because if you look at Grant Morrison, he's done Batman for a long time. He briefly done Superman. Now he's done Green Lantern. He also done Justice League. And I know he wrote a one on one show. He's never had a run on the main one on one book at all. He has written Flash. So I think him doing Green Lantern was a good step right step right direction. But... If you keep wondering, like, okay, with these two books, like, ending his run, like, okay, like, what book is left? I mean, the, the, the Jinx World books, they're all been concluded. So, what's left for Bendis? Let me think. I think the only books left to go are for him just Young Justice and Lead to Superheroes. Yeah. I think Bendis is trying to cut down the comics rights because, in case you're wondering about his reputation about Haran comics, he has tens of about five or six at the same time. Yeah, but here's the thing. This why I think he writes multiple comics at the same time. At least that he has the book come out on time. Most of the time, anyways. The only time this actually was a problem, I think, amount of time, was when he wrote Kenny X-Men during the end of his run. But mostly put this by he has multiple books come out at the same time. He at least has, they come out on a good schedule. Like, the day he's supposed to come out, they come out that day. Yes, the only writer who's had a problem with basically coming book come out on time is Mark Millar. He's had a big reputation of his humongous delays. Because books like Kick-Ass and Ultimates, yeah, these books were delayed up the wazoo. I would say probably the first book he worked on that wasn't having heavy delays was Jupiter Legacy. Yeah, it was, there was no other way to that come out on time. Bendis, most of the time he does have books come out on time. Yep. But yeah, not much to say about these two trades, but can't. Wait to do more trades. I got two more trades in today. I'll probably review them soon. Probably either tomorrow or Monday at the latest. Okay, so that's it for particular review. I don't think I have time to do another review. I could probably start watching the Arlon Park tonight. But I probably won't finish it probably until tomorrow. And I'll do a review for that. The main review for One Piece. Yeah, that's coming out tomorrow. And My Hero Academia. Yep. Basically, I hopefully have about three videos happening tomorrow. I'm not sure reasons you're here, though, because I'm still reading book three. Okay? See you in the next video. Bye.